Is everyone ready? Let's get ready for chemistry! Ah! Stoichiometry can be further complicated by the need to cancel units that aren't moles. For example, if we started out with 20 grams of phosphoric acid, and we wanted to know how many moles of calcium hydroxide we would need to react with those 20 grams, it sort of complicates the problem a little bit. What we want to do is we want to start with the quantity that they gave us, and then we want to do the mole to mole ratio. So to do that, we do moles over moles, and then the guy that you start the problem with goes on the bottom, and then the guy that you're looking for goes on top. And then you bring down their coefficients in the problem. Now, we have a problem. Grams of phosphoric acid don't cancel with moles of phosphoric acid. But we know that whenever mass is involved, we're going to need the molar mass. So if we go find the molar mass of phosphoric acid, it comes out to be 98 and then units, grams of phosphoric acid, for every one mole of phosphoric acid. Now we can take this number and we can plug it into our equation. We want to plug it in so that the units cancel. We'll put one mole of H3PO4 on top, and we'll put the 98 grams of H3PO4 on the bottom. The moles of phosphoric acid cancel with moles of phosphoric acid, and the grams of phosphoric acid cancel with grams of phosphoric acid, leaving us with moles of calcium hydroxide, which is what we wanted at the start of the problem. So 20 times 3 divided by 2 divided by 98 is 0 0.31 moles of calcium hydroxide. Let's do it again, except this time, instead of going to moles of calcium hydroxide, let's go to grams of calcium hydroxide. Starting with the quantity that they gave us, 20 grams of phosphoric acid, we'll do the mole to mole ratio. That starts the problem. And we'll put moles of what they gave us on the bottom. And we'll put moles of what they want us to find on top. The ratio is 3 to 2, but grams of phosphoric acid don't cancel with moles of phosphoric acid. We know that when we're working with grams of phosphoric acid, we're going to need the molar mass of phosphoric acid. The molar mass is 98 grams of phosphoric acid for every one mole of phosphoric acid. And you'll notice that even though the ratio is 2 for phosphoric acid, this is still a 1 down here, because molar mass is always the number of grams per 1 mole. We plug this in so that the units cancel. Grams cancels with grams, and moles cancels with moles. We need to be careful, though, now to make sure that grams of H3PO4 are canceling with grams of H3PO4. When you work out a stoichiometry problem, you've got to keep the molecule on there as part of the units. So the units now are both moles and phosphoric acid. Now, in the original problem, we wanted grams of calcium hydroxide. So right now we've got moles of calcium hydroxide. The way to turn moles into grams is using the molar mass. The molar mass of calcium hydroxide is 74.02. 74.02 grams of calcium hydroxide for every one mole of calcium hydroxide. Now this time we want to plug this in so that moles are on the bottom. Moles on the bottom cancels with moles on top, and we're careful to cancel moles of calcium hydroxide with moles of calcium hydroxide. This gives us grams of calcium hydroxide on top, which is what we were looking for. So when we do the math here, we do 20 times 3 divided by 2 divided by 98 times 74.02 is 
23 grams of calcium hydroxide. So 23 grams of calcium hydroxide is needed to react 20 grams of phosphoric acid. The two numbers are equivalent. Let's do it again, except this time let's work with molarity. If you've got, for example, 100 mils of phosphoric acid and you had a 0.2 molar solution and you had a 0.2 molar solution, how would that change the problem? Well, when you're working with molarity, when you're using molarity, you have to take the molarity and turn it into the number of moles per one liter. And now you can actually take that and use it for stuff. But do I want to start with that? No, because when you're using the molarity, you don't want to start with the molarity because the molarity is a ratio. And you want to avoid starting problems with ratios when you can help it. 90% of the time, it's better to start with the amount rather than the ratio. It's going to make the problem cleaner most of the time. So we'll start with 100 mils of phosphoric acid. Now what? With a stoichiometry problem, the second step is always, well, I recommend the mole to mole ratio. So I recommend that your second step is always the mole to mole ratio because that drives the unit canceling. Now we see the H3PO4 needs to go on the bottom because it's currently on top. And then our question mark guy needs to go on top because that's what we're looking for. Nothing cancels and we're okay with that. Let's finish this step by bringing down the coefficients. Nothing cancels, but we're okay with that. To get volume to cancel with moles, we need the molarity and we need to use it as a conversion. The molarity of phosphoric acid is 0 0.2 moles per liter. Moles cancels with moles. Liters don't cancel with mils, however. So one liter of phosphoric acid is 1,000 mils of phosphoric acid. And I'm running out of room. Oh no! Milliliters cancel with milliliters and liters cancel with liters. And now we're left with moles of calcium hydroxide. But we didn't want moles of calcium hydroxide. We wanted grams of calcium hydroxide. So now we just have to turn moles into grams. And we turn moles into grams using the molar mass. So the molar mass of calcium hydroxide is 74.02 grams of calcium hydroxide for every one mole of calcium hydroxide. So we'll plug this in. One mole, totally out of room, of calcium hydroxide is 74.02 grams of calcium hydroxide. And then moles of cal calcium hydroxide cancel with moles of calcium hydroxide, leaving us with grams of calcium hydroxide on top, which is what we were looking for. So we'll do 100 times 3 divided by 2 times 0.2 divided by 1,000 times 74.02. So 2.2 grams of calcium hydroxide would be needed to neutralize 100 mils of 0 0.2 molar phosphoric acid. These two values are equivalent. That's what stoichiometry tells us. So when you're trying to use the molarity, you need to turn it into the ratio and then plug it into the stoichiometry problem so that the units cancel. The best way to go about doing that is to do the mole-to-mole -mole ratio first and then look at what you need to do to make the units cancel. What if I had 100 mils of 0 0.2 molar phosphoric acid and I want to know what concentration 
of calcium hydroxide would be necessary to neutralize the phosphoric acid if I wanted to make a 500 mil solution of calcium hydroxide. So what concentration of calcium hydroxide would I have to make and dump it in and make the two neutralize each other? Okay, this is going to be a stoichiometry problem because we're starting with one thing and we're converting it into another thing. How do you know where to start? We don't want to start with the molarity because it's a ratio. We can either start with the 500 mils or we can start with the 100 mils. But we don't want to start with the 500 mils because that's where the question mark is. We don't want to start with any quantity having to do with the thing that we're looking for. So where we want to start is we want to start with 100 mils of phosphoric acid. So starting with 100 mils of H3PO4 and then And then when we do stoichiometry, we want to do the mole to mole ratio next. And then we'll do moles of H3PO4 on the bottom because that's what's on top. And then we'll try to go to calcium hydroxide. So we'll put moles of calcium hydroxide on top. And we need to bring down the coefficients. Now milliliters of phosphoric acid don't cancel with moles of phosphoric acid. So to get that to cancel, we'll convert the molarity into 0 0.2 moles per 1 liter. And we'll plug that in so that the units cancel. So 0 0.2 moles of phosphoric acid for every 1 liter of phosphoric acid. Mills don't cancel with liters, so 1 liter of phosphoric acid is 1,000 mils of phosphoric acid. And I want to keep the molecule on here because I can't cancel the unit if they're a different molecule. Everything cancels, leaving me with moles of calcium hydroxide, which isn't really what I wanted. What I wanted was molarity of calcium hydroxide. But remember that when you're finding the molarity, you want to find the amount of solute and divide it by the volume of solution. The amount of solute is right here. It's moles of calcium hydroxide. So if I do 100 times 3 divided by 2 times 0.2 divided by 1,000, I get 0 0.03 moles of calcium hydroxide and then if I divide that by the volume of my calcium hydroxide solution, I can turn that into molarity if I have moles on top and liters on the bottom. So the molarity of this solution would be 0 0.06 molar A 0 0.06 molar solution with 500 mils is equivalent to 100 mils of 0.2 molar phosphoric acid. Is everyone ready? Let's get ready for chemistry! Ah!